Hello and welcome to Talk to Stu with me, Stuart Magoo. And uh, yes, hope everybody is well. In this video, we are going to be going over the uh, budget that went on last week and what the uh, things that were announced are going to mean for you, if any of them apply to you, of course. And uh, I'll also be talking a little bit about TV licenses. So let's get into it. So what's been announced? Well, not a great deal. So the first thing that was announced is that the cost of living payments are effectively scrapped. So they won't be continuing in 2024. Uh, people are supposed to uh, possibly be grateful, I don't know, uh, that in April uh, the majority of benefits will be going up by a little over 6%. That figure obviously uh, isn't great because they chose a specific window uh, for when inflation was kind of at its lowest last year uh, to, to calculate that. For most of the rest of the year it was somewhere above that usually around 10%, a little bit more, a little bit lower. And, of course, increasing at 6% now, uh, it's still going up. You know, inflation is still there, it's still going up. So costs are still going up, and the 6% comes a bit late. So you'll always be behind what the actual inflation rate is with this. So that's the first thing. So yes, it's welcome that there is an increase, uh, but it still keeps you essentially below the poverty line if you are entirely reliant on uh, benefits to survive. So that's the first thing. So unwelcome news that the cost of living payment is not going to be continued. Uh, the second thing is that the Household Support Fund is going to be continued. So this is a bit of an odd one. So the Household Support Fund is something that each local authority is given to uh, administer as they see fit. Now, each local authority has a different approach. Most local authorities tend to look at it as a sort of grant that is given to people who are uh, struggling in some way. Some local authorities, however, go down a different path with it and they will uh, give out things like vouchers or it might be equipment, donations of equipment, things like that, uh, that people can, uh, can get. Uh, it might be money off vouchers for energy, uh, things like that. So, uh, the Household Support Fund, as I say, it varies from area to area. Most places tend to go down the path of uh, giving out a grant. Now, previously, the government had given no indication as to whether the Household Support Fund was going to continue or not. So, most local authorities kind of decided that probably it wasn't going to continue and either stop taking applications after Christmas or uh, even rejected applications that were coming in after Christmas. So uh, essentially we thought the fund was going to end uh, but it's not, it's been extended. So that means if you did try and apply for the Household Support Fund in the last few months and were unsuccessful, then it may be worth you trying to apply for it again. Now, uh, to find out what's available locally to you, I have popped uh, a link in the description, which is to End Furniture Poverty, because they have a local welfare assistance finder which you can pop your postcode in and it will tell you uh, what household support fund is available to you and how you can access it. So that is a very useful thing. So worth checking out there. Now the next thing that um, 
is a bit of an odd one, is there has been an extension to budgeting advance loans payback. So a lot of people on universal credit will get caught out by the uh, five-week rule when they first move on to universal credit, which is that uh, essentially universal credit doesn't kick in until five weeks after you sign up for it. Now, most people are either paid on a weekly basis or on a salary basis. And indeed, most rental payments and council tax payments and energy bill payments go out on a four weekly basis once a month, generally. So yes, there are a couple of five week months in the year, but it doesn't really work out like that. So almost as soon as you sign up for universal credit, you uh, many people will realise that actually they're not going to be able to make those payments. So they might be tempted to take out a budgeting advance loan. What this means is, is that when you take out that loan, which is interest free, big of them, uh, when you take out that loan, uh, you then have to uh, pay that back out of your universal credit payment. So your overall universal credit payment is then reduced. Now, this has always been calculated over 12 months. And part of the reason for that has always been that uh, people will pay it off quicker. And that's now been changed to a two-year thing. So that means that the amount taken for... Uh, paying back the loan reduces, which means you get more of your universal credit to uh, award to spend on living and whatever. So that seems like it's a good thing in many respects, but the difficulty is, is that that means you have a reduced universal credit payment for much longer. So it sort of depends on how things work out for you. Now, for somebody who is uh, looking to get back into work and even gets back into work fairly quickly, uh, that's maybe a good thing, as that's uh, a smaller amount coming out of your wage every month, because obviously if you go back into work, you'll have to pay it off that way instead. So it's a smaller amount coming out, and... Um, yeah, you can you can do that if you want. Uh, that's fine. But for families and things like that who are uh, maybe unable to work because they're disabled or they have disabled children and they're caring for them, things like that, then that's sort of, in a way, robbing Peter to pay Paul. So you have to think very carefully about how that's going to work for you. And I always say, uh, if you are looking at uh, an advanced budgeting loan, um, think very carefully before you take it out. Uh, if you if you absolutely have to pay rent and council tax, then definitely pay those things. I always say prioritise your rent and your council tax over any other payments that are going out. Um, keeping a roof over your head and keeping the council tax people from banging on your door is is definitely the best thing to do uh, so yes and of course more recently we're seeing that uh, more universal credit accounts are are paying the housing benefit element of their universal credit directly to landlords which is uh, good particularly in certain situations uh, so debt relief order fees have been scrapped this is the next thing so People struggling with debt in the UK uh, are able to apply for a debt relief order from the government. You will need to meet specific criteria, including owing less than £30,000 and having less than £75 a month spare income. So this is... Uh, I, I'm not recommending or, or advising anybody on debt relief orders, debt and uh, financial matters is not my specialist area so I would say if you are in a position where you have debt and you need to uh, find a way of dealing with that then you need to take proper financial advice. Uh, Step Change is a good organisation to to contact to discuss these kind of things um, 
but what was announced is that the £90 fee is now being dropped. So previously, to apply for a debt relief order, uh, one would have to spend £90, which is a bit counterintuitive. If, you, if you're in a position where you can't pay off debt, then where are you going to find £90? So, um, yeah, so that's been removed now. So that, that's taken away a barrier to, to doing that. So that's worth looking at. Uh, as I say, by contacting Step Change or the Citizens Advice Bureau. Again, I'll pop a link to Step Change in there. So, those are the main things to have come out of the budget. Uh, there was a kind of um, agreement that the tougher sanction regime was going to, to they're still pushing forward with that, um, because it's been proven to be so beneficial in the past. Uh, so yeah, that's still going on. The whole bank accounts thing is still going on. All of that's still happening. No changes there, um, and no major things to really impact uh, people in that way. And as we say, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the the only sort of bit of good news is that um, the uh, prices, uh, the amount that you get receive will be rising at 6.7 percent in uh, April and yeah so that's happening now just one other thing which I will uh, let everyone know if you happen to be on pension credit and over the age of where is it I think it's 70, 74 uh, you can apply for a free TV license so this was introduced back in January and is, uh, yeah, welcome news. So yes, if you are on pension credit, then that is something that you can go for. So pension credit uh, basically tops up your pension to £201.05 if you're single and a joint weekly income to £306.85 if you have a partner. So those are weekly figures. Uh, generally speaking, most people who are struggling on a bit of a low income with their pension will tend to find that they're locked out of being able to apply for pension credit because they're getting a very small pension from a previous employer. So it might only be £10, £20, £30 pounds a month but that will lock them out of getting pension credit. Now, on the face of it, they're still receiving the same amount that they would get if they claimed pension credit, but pension credit has those extra uh, benefits added to it, such as the free TV licence for one thing, and also uh, money off dental treatment and uh, things like that. So, yeah. That's something to think about if you are on pension credit. Uh, if pen, if you if you're not sure whether you would qualify for pension credit or not, best organisation to get in touch with to discuss that is Age UK. Uh, they are um, pretty good with all that sort of stuff. They can do uh, a benefit check over the phone for you in many cases and uh, you know they can certainly provide you with all the information you need. Do remember as well though pension credit is not just about what your earnings are, it's also about what you've got in savings. So if you have uh, savings over a certain amount then the government would expect you to live off those savings as well. So that is another thing to bear in mind. So yeah, that's about it for me on this little news update today. If you found this useful or beneficial in any way, then please like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified of new videos that I'm going to be posting or indeed would like to join us on the usually the first Tuesday of the month where I do a live Q&A, so you can uh, drop in and ask all sorts of questions on benefits and uh, particularly around disability and health, that sort of thing. That's my main area of focus. Um, so universal credit, the out-of-work sickness element, 
uh, employment support allowance, personal independence payment, that sort of thing. So you can drop in and ask your questions there. Uh, so yeah, that's and um, we've got a nice community of people that are really supportive. Uh, there's also some other guys who join me in the chat who are uh, benefits uh, specialists themselves who who often can come in and answer questions here and there too. So that's always good. Um, so yeah, like I say, thanks for watching. A uh, bit of a brief one today, which is rare for me. And um, yeah, we will uh, see you soon. I'm just going to lean over here to do my little transition thing because I, you know, I don't have any flashy things. Oh, that's the other thing. If you've watched all of this and you found it to be a little bit boring, um, tough, quite frankly, uh, I don't do these to be interesting or exciting. I do them to be to be beneficial and helpful. Uh, so as I say, check the description because I'll post. Um, uh, some links and stuff like that in there. Uh, yeah. Bye for now. <laughs>